Have you ever felt disappointed in yourself? Have you ever been in a situation where you think, oh, I wish I didn't get angry with that person. I wish I didn't give in to that temptation like I have done. I wish, I wish that I hadn't spoken to my kids in that way. What do you do when you feel disappointed in yourself? Our, our psychological culture tells us this. You've got to learn to love yourself. You've got to learn to forgive yourself. Now that might sound good, but actually when you work it through, it's absolute rubbish. Think about all the people that you find really difficult to get on with. Aren't they the kind of people that are in love with themselves? Aren't they the kind of people that struggle to look at the things in their lives and see where they've gone wrong? Now, loving yourself is just simply not enough. And also, <laughs> you are not stable. One day you might love yourself, one minute you might hate yourself. Uh, you cannot rely on your identity based on yourself with all your changing emotions and feelings. I would argue that what you need is you need the unconditional love of God. But how on earth can God love you in that way? One of the, the most common things that I've heard people respond to these videos with is it could somebody uh, could God love somebody like me? I'm still sinning, I'm doing things wrong. Could God love somebody like me? And that's a great question to ask, bearing in mind what we've been reading in Ephesians 2 recently. Let me give you a quick recap of what has been said. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the rule of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who were disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts like the rest, we were, we were by nature deserving of wrath. That's Ephesians 2, 1 to 3. And that's what the Bible says is true of you and true of me. By nature, we are deserving of God's wrath. We are dead in our transgressions of sin. And so it's a good thing to ask, could God love someone like that? Well, amazingly, when we get to verse four, there's a but. But it's a great word in the right context. You drive me mad, but I still love you. Well, you made a few mistakes on your driving test, but you still passed. Well, here, we've heard that we're dead in transgressions and sins. We heard that we follow the ways of this world. We heard that we're under the rulership of the devil. We've heard that by nature we're deserving of wrath, but because of his great love for us. God loves us. He has a great love for us, a love that is beyond anything we can imagine. You see, when we think of love, we tend to be responding to something that we like in a person. Uh, I love my wife because over the years, uh, I just fell in love with her, I fell in love with who she is. I love my children because they're my children. Of course, these people get things wrong at times, but there's something in them that I'm attracted to. But God's love is very different. He can love those who are completely unlovable. We're told in the Bible, he even loves his enemies. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy. Mercy is the ability to forgive someone, to let something go. And God doesn't just do this occasionally. He is rich in it. He loves it. It's one of the things he's, he's desperate to do. God, rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. So Paul's speaking to Christians here and he said, we were dead, but in Jesus we've been made alive. And if you trust in Jesus, that can happen to you. And all this happens... All of this happens even when we were dead in transgressions or as elsewhere in the Bible it says even when we were enemies. God didn't look out into the world and say who are the best people out there? Let me gather them in and create some kind of spiritual club of all the best people. No, he looked for the worst 
and he loved them and he raised them from the dead, being rich in mercy, even when they were his enemies, even when they were still rejecting him. So when you look at that question, could God ever love someone like me? If you focus too much on the me, you'll always answer no. Because when you look in the deep recesses of your heart, you'll start to see some of the things mentioned in verses one to three, the ways that you fall short. But the amazing gift of God is this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Could God ever love someone like me? Don't focus on the me bit. Focus on the God. Could the God who is rich in mercy love someone like me? Could the God of great love love someone like me? Could the God who loves people who are dead in their transgressions and sins love someone like me? The answer is yes. Now, if you've got any questions about this, whether you're watching live or whether you're watching uh, back, feel free uh, to drop them in the comments. At the very least, it'd be lovely to know who's watched this or maybe um, just, to, yeah, just to have an idea of who's, who's there watching now and watching later. But I wanna close uh, by sharing a way that you, if you're watching this and you would like the love of God, uh, that you could have that for yourself. So I'm gonna pray and I'd love you to pray this prayer along with me and do get in touch if you have done. Father God, we thank you that you are a great God. Father, we accept that when we look at ourselves, if we hate what we see, we see rightly. We are dead in transgressions and sins. We have done wrong against you, but we know that Jesus died to take the penalty for our sin. And we ask that because of what he has done through your great love, you would welcome us into fellowship with you. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.